the numbers up. But do you think there comes a point where people kind of get sick of this kind of thing and just want to believe the two of the best of what fighting each other in the world? Because it is a rarity to see two of the best guys really face each other. I mean, when was the last time we can truly say we saw a matchup like that? Two guys who are that talented at the same time in history in their primes. And you all want to talk about a bus? It's like, how unimaginative are you? I mean, there's a reality, though. Number one, the bus was effective. I mean, you can't you can't say it wasn't. It was. So that's always a problem you have to deal with. My my producers over there, we debated this on my show. The, the debate we had was, no one disputed that the bus was a very powerful vehicle, quite literally, to sell the fight. But let's say you didn't have it. Could you sell it with some other mechanism? Could you get the exact same results going some other direction? And he disagreed, but I thought if you did a world tour, you could, because to the Malkovich point, there was it wasn't just soaring rhetoric. You know, this was history tonight. Forget all the stuff afterwards. This was a historic moment, the best division, two of the best guys, the un, the uncrowned former king coming back against this nightmare from Dagestan, Russia. Jesus Christ, you need a bus to sell that? I mean, how much of a dog with a shit palate as a fight fan? Fight fan here all day, every day. Shout out to Luke Thomas. Shout out to Submission Radio. Um, two points I want to address here. Two points I would really love to address. Let me get started, okay? If Connor did all of that, and mind you, Connor has done things that really garner that kind of attention. He has done things that are quote unquote semi gangster. Look, he's done these kinds of things for a long time, and he's done them under the geiger of him being the cash cow for the UFC. So there's clear favoritism to this happening, right? My question is real simple. Why isn't Dana saying or doing much about this? I know that the, the Nevada, Nevada State Commission, State Athletic Commission, whatever they call them, I know they handling this case. I know that um, they probably gonna suspend Khabib. It's it's not gonna be pretty for Khabib anytime soon, right? I agree with that. I know that's gonna happen. What I don't understand is again, Dana White has handed a treasure chest of gold, right? He's handed the opportunity to make another person in the UFC a superstar nearly as big as uh Connor, and he's not using it. He's just no, nah, we'll bet on Connor every single time. He had the same opportunity with the Diaz brothers. What happened? He let them go for like three, four years, my guy. Now he has the same opportunity with Khabib. Khabib isn't a big deal in America, my guy. You go to Russia, and he's a huge deal, my guy. You go to that side of the world, and already you have a superstar that garners that kind of attention. So every time you go to that part of the world, every time you host something in that part of the world, you have your own cash cow. Stupid Dana over here doesn't even want to get Habib out of the situation. He's not trying to pull Connor's strings. He's not helping in the way he should be. I'm not I'm not saying he should help simply because Habib is the best simply. I am looking at this from a financial aspect, okay? This could, this could literally make another superstar out of a UFC fighter. Aren't you sick of seeing Connor? Aren't you sick of seeing that guy as a rep for the greatest that MMA can do for anybody? What I mean by greatest is the superstar status he has created, the money he has made, right? Just those two things. I think that Dana not using this to its ultimate really begs the question if he should still be president of the UFC. Just my question. Let me know what you guys think. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'm out. Um, oh, so this is a big deal for Asians around the world. Yeah, it's huge. Uh, awesome. This movie, Crazy Rich Asians, it's top of the box office right now. It was a book too, right, Jen? Yeah. Did you guys read, read book. the book? Nah. It's about time <laughs> Asians had a movie. This is the first time, right? There was a yeah, rush hour take book. it easy. Rush hour one. Rush hour two. <laughs> Big Trouble but Little Brandon, China. Brandon, that Hold was on, Big one Trouble Asian Little guy. China. Brandon, that was one Asian guy. Rumble in the Bronx. That was one, that was one Asian guy. This Rumble one Asian. in the Bronx. Um, listen, everyone listen. Rumble <laughs> in the Bronx. Brandon. Godzilla. Brandon. One, two. <laughs> Brandon. Yeah, yeah they, these are... I understand, but that was just some Asian actor. Enter the Dragon. Brandon. Okay, but that was a long time ago. That was all karate. This is about...
The Last Samurai. There's no karate in this Tom movie. Tom Cruise in The Last Samurai. There are no swords of karate. This is like human beings having like relationships. <laughs> Disney's Mulan. <laughs> Brendan. Brendan. Emperor's New Groove. Oh, no, it was Polynesian. God.